Okay, uh, I want to make this video to show how to get into a more perfect orbit because I noticed uh, some people are having a bit of trouble, new players of course, are having a bit of trouble uh, getting into an orbit that's like perfectly circular, not ridiculously eccentric or whatever. And there's a little bit of a trick to doing that. Uh, anyway, I'm using a ship that's more meant for heavy lifting, so... Your ship doesn't need to look like this. You can orbit with very small ships, but I wanted to do a mission, so I'm going to use this ship for now. Uh, this is intended for taking satellites into orbit, so I'm actually going to be orbiting in a little bit of a smaller uh, a smaller orbit than usual, but I'm aiming for around 200,000, but I think I might miss it just a bit. Anyway. If you notice, I'm actually slowly lowering my throttle as my velocity increases. Because as long as the velocity is increasing, you've got enough throttle. So I'm going to lower the throttle and try to keep it below around 200 meters per second. Up until I'm completely out of the atmosphere. That's just so... Um, I'm not sure if it saves fuel necessarily. Uh, it might because of the wind resistance. But also, it just gets you a little bit more of a speed so you can get to the correct altitude a lot easier without having to do too many adjustments. Okay, uh, once I get between around 20,000 and 10,000, I'm going to start slowly leaning over. The, the lean can give you a little bit better efficiency, but it's not incredibly important. Like, you have a pretty big window of when to lean for your altitude. Picking when to cut your throttle on your trajectory is more important. You'll see that later. This is just for these, though. If you want to be really precise, you're going to have to get a lot of practice in or maybe use one of the plugins that helps you with orbit. Anyway, uh, I think I start leaning about 13 or 14,000. I'm just going to lean over a little bit, just, you know, like 10 degrees or something. Uh, just for now, I'm going to wait till I'm above 30,000, above the atmosphere pretty much, and it goes from surface to being in orbit, and that always switches the velocity vector over quite a few degrees, so I don't want to lean too much now, or I'll be on a really flat trajectory. And I'm just going to lean a little bit more at 20,000 to almost 20-something uh, 20, 20 degrees, not 45 yet. Anyway, around 37,000, I think, it's going to switch to being in orbit, and my velocity vector is going to all of a sudden jump. I have no idea why it does that, like, physically, I don't know, but whatever. Anyway, uh, we're, this thing's got a lot of fuel in its tanks, so we'll see what happens here. Okay, it just jumped. Now I'm going to raise my throttle to full throttle and point straight at my velocity vector. And then I'll turn back on my ASAS and keep it. If you notice, I'm turning my ASAS on as I'm doing this to hold angle, but you can do it without ASAS. Anyway, look at my apoapsis on my trajectory right now. I want that to reach around 200,000, and then I'm going to cut throttle. So that's what I'm doing right now. You don't need to be in orbit at 200,000. You just want your apoapsis on your trajectory to reach it. See, that was it right there. I cut throttle at around 202,000. And now I'm just drifting, but I'll follow that trajectory. That's why it's there. So I don't need any throttle to keep going up. Anyway, we're drifting. Uh, this this ship is intended to reach much higher altitudes than this, so I've got a lot of fuel, so my maneuvering is kind of iffy here, but this is what you need to do. It'll be easier in a smaller ship at a lower altitude like this. Anyway, now I'm just fasting forward to get really close to my apoapsis, and right before I reach it, I'm going to boost again straight at the horizon, which is where my velocity vector should be pointing. And that will reach orbital altitude. And since I'm near the apoapsis, my periapsis is just going to extend straight out, which is how it it's going to extend straight out. So I just wait until they're about even, then cut throttle again, and I'll be in orbit there. I'm going to turn on my RCS so I can spin around, because this thing isn't... It's intended those outside tanks on this rocket are supposed to be off at this point, but uh, I wanted to show you how to get into a shorter orbit than usual, so that's why. Anyway, uh, the velocity vector is almost aiming right at the horizon. It doesn't need to be perfect. You want to boost a little bit before, you might miss it. I missed it a little bit here. That's why the orbit's a little bit eccentric. You want to boost as cl close to it as possible without passing it. Anyway, now I'm on full throttle, boosting straight at the horizon. I just drop those external tanks. 
And now, if you notice, my paraps is going straight out, so the uh, the trajectory is expanding on both sides uh, to get into a wider circle. It's a circle right now, but the circle is going through the planet. We want it to be a circle going around the planet. So we're just going to keep boosting. We've got three tanks and wait until my periapsis goes out the other side, which is going to happen very soon. And this is uh, this is pretty much the way that most people will get into orbit. But they might do a little bit better job, because if you notice I pass my apoapsis a lot, that's why this is a little bit of an eccentric orbit. But we're going to fix that in just a moment. I'm going to wait till my periapsis goes above 150 so I can boost 50 times with the time compression. So that makes it a lot easier for this video. And then we're going to go wait until we get to our apoapsis again, which is around 230,000 or so. And then this is at about 170,000. So once we reach our apoapsis, we're going to point at the velocity vector on the horizon again and boost, which is going to extend our periapsis out. And then once the periapsis is really close to our apoapsis, we'll cut throttle and we'll be in almost a perfect orbit. I don't quite get it here because my this ship isn't really designed for this kind of mission, but um, you can get it very, very close to perfect if you're really trying. Anyway, we're going to cut throttle right before the apoapsis and readjust. I actually go the wrong way here, so I have to complete a full revolution, but whatever. This is a heavy ship, so it takes a little while. I have to use my RCS systems. We're just spinning around. Still spinning. Still spinning. Okay, I'm turning off RCS. Now getting ready to flatten out right at that horizon on the velocity vector again. Just like before, only this time we're actually in orbit. So as long, if you boost at the apoapsis, you'll extend the periapsis. And if you boost at the periapsis, you'll extend the apoapsis. That's the way it works. And if you retro at either, it does the opposite. So, we're stri aiming straight at the uh, velocity vector right now. And we're going to re-enable ASAS, disable RCS, and we're going to boost again. Now you notice the periapsis is extending, we're at 230 there, 212, 220, 228, we're a little bit past it so we missed a little bit, but I think we're about 231 to 229 in the upper part of that, and that's pretty close, we're within just a couple kilometers, you can get it within just, I don't know, like 100 meters, one of my satellites is orbiting about there, but this is, that's how you do it, you just gotta tweak practice and tweak it, a little bit and eventually get